Please don't forget, guys, like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell. You know it makes sense. Come on, you irons. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whatever time of day it is, wherever you're watching this around the world, welcome to Full Iron. I'm Gatesy, your host. Just a few things I wanted to run through with you today, a few little conversation pieces. The big news is that it's now been confirmed that subsequent to his injury in the Liverpool game, Angelo Ogbonna has now been ruled out for the rest of the season with the ACL injury he sustained. Um, I, I'm, I'm not really shocked. I'm not shocked at all by the news. I was keeping my fingers crossed it would be something positive and that he would be back before the conclusion of this Premier League season. But I always knew that a guy that's 33 years of age and he's had a few injuries leading up to this I know they're unrelated but they, they put mileage on the clock and when you get older you possibly can't heal as quickly as you did when you were say 23 at the age of 33 so I'm not totally shocked to hear that he's out for the rest of the season very very regrettable he's a massive massive player for West Ham and had it not been for the injury that he sustained last season, for one thing, I think that we would have got the extra three points that would have propelled us to a Champions League position. That's how much of an influence I think he was on the team at that stage. Uh, but also, I think there's a very, very strong possibility he may, he may have actually gone on to pick up the Hammer of the Year award. So the fact that he's got injured again, it's, it's regrettable. For, for the team, but more fundamentally for Angelo Ogbonna himself. Now, in an earlier video that I recorded, I made reference to the fact that his contract was going to be up in this particular summer. And I asked the question, could this be the last time that we see Angelo Ogbonna in a claret and blue shirt? Now, whilst it's subsequently been announced that the club will extend his contract by at least another 12 months I still wonder I do still wonder is he going to come back because an anterior cruciate ligament injury is a big injury and as I say at the age of 33 going on 34 the road ahead for Angelo Ogbonna is a long and very rocky one so I wish him all the very best um, and I hope to see him in a claret and blue shirt again next season but it's not going to happen this season this now brings us to the second conversation topic because there is a story out there. We are looking at the Hertha Berlin player and German international, Nicholas Stark. That's Tony Stark. Can't get the stuff. Nicholas Stark, two-time cap by Germany. He's currently at Hertha Berlin and he spent his formative years at Nuremberg. Now, he's six foot three, 26 years of age, and he's shortly to be out of contract at the end of this season. It was thought that David Moyes was interested in the player, but possibly might have gone for him in the summer when he could have got him for free. Obviously now with the injury to Ogbonna, it now makes it a little bit more of a pressing concern for David Moyes to bolster his defensive options. One of the other little interesting pieces of information which could be a very good, make him a very good signing, is he's also capable of playing as a defensive mid. Now, given that there's an awful lot of people that say that Declan Rice and Thomas Socek, they're playing too much football, this, that and the other, which is a, is a fair comment, the fact that he can cover both centre-half and defensive mid does make him quite a... A useful addition I feel and at the age of 26 he's he's approaching his prime years in what I would believe to be his prime years as a defensive midfield slash centre-back position I think that players in that position usually reach their peak around about the age of 28 so he's approaching his peak and I think that this is what we need to try and do we need to get players that have still got their peak ahead of them and not behind them and Obviously, being that we would be looking to get him in January if this comes to pass, and he's obviously going to be out of contract, it's basically Hertha Berlin's last opportunity to get 
any money through the door for him. So he could come at a very good mm. price for West Ham, unlike the love happy to get Nicholas Stark through the door at, at, um, at London Stadium. I'm showing the age there, Upton Park. At London Stadium, I think it would be a, a very good signing. And as I say, it's, um, it's a player with an awful lot of potential ahead of him, Nicholas Stark, not Tony Stark. Another piece of news, it appears that Jesse Lingard has told Manchester United that he's not prepared to sign a contract extension. And again, same as with Nicholas Stark, his contract is up in the summer. So the January transfer window represents the last opportunity for Manchester United to get any transfer revenue for him before he leaves in the summer for literally not a penny. Now... I'm a massive Jesse Lingard fan. I was I was a massive Jesse Lingard fan before he came to West Ham. I thought he was a fantastic player. And when we signed him, I was really excited. And he obviously came through the door, hit the ground running, 16 appearances, nine goals, five assists from memory. And would be a player that would 100% would strengthen our squad. And I know people turn around and say, but would he get into the first 11? Well, at the minute, maybe he wouldn't. But... We've got Ben Rama going to the African Cup of Nations in January, and he, you know, he could fill a number of positions. He could play wide left, wide right, number ten, or he could play as a false nine. So he would be a tremendous asset. He's very, very versatile, and he's proven in the Premier League. He's proven in European competitions. He, he's won the Europa League with Manchester United. He scored an FA Cup winning goal. He's got a winner's mentality. And this is what David Moyes is trying to get within the club. You know, a winner's mentality, and he absolutely has it. So, And he would fit, you know, we, it's not like he, it would be that big a risk. He's, he's been at West Ham only a short time ago, half a season on loan, did fantastically. He's bonded well with the players, he's bonded well with the coaching staff. The f fans, by and large, took to him. Obviously, since there's been some fans that are like, do we really need him? we've moved on and all the rest of it but I just think he's an absolutely quality signing and, and I'd be all, all over it the only thing that's a little bit of a fly in the ointment was a post that Jesse Lingard's brother Louis Scott put out on Instagram which was rather ambiguous I think it's fair to say you know it seemed to read that, that he had the ump about certain fans sort of having an opinion that says that they, they don't really want Jesse through the door and as I say there's probably just as many fans that want him through the door as don't but he finished the post off with "Come on, you irons," and I, and I was like, "What does that mean?" I'm, I was I was really perplexed by it. It's it, it just sort of like it. There was real mixed messages there. I I don't know. But the thing is, obviously, that's his brother. It's not like it came from Jesse Lingard himself. So, you know, I still think that this move is quite possible. The only thing that worries me is whether Newcastle, obviously, with their Saudi Arabian millions, might step in at the eleventh hour and, and offer him. Uh, a sort of like a ridiculous contract that blows us out of the water. That's 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 my real concern. But I'd like to think that the bond that he's made with West Ham as a club, with the the playing staff, the coaching staff, and all the rest of it, might just give us a little bit of a an advantage in that particular um, outcome. I mean, of course, the other thing that could happen, Jesse Lingard might make the decision to sit on his contract and and let his contract you know wind down, and then obviously. He can then leave on a free and the money that the club would save on a transfer fee, he could then weave into his signing on fee and into his weekly wage. So it makes it more lucrative for the player himself. But I think we need to try and get him through the door. We need to try and strengthen the squad because let's have it right. We're still in the, in the League Cup as we recall this. We're flying high in the Premier League. We're, we're into the next round of the Europa League, whether that's the playoff round or whether that's going to be the last 16 remains to be seen, but I rather suspect it's going to be the last 16, fingers crossed. And then obviously we've got the FA Cup to come. We've got Saeed Ben Rama that will disappear in January for a, a six-week spell or thereabouts for the African Cup of Nations. So we need to get the squad as strong as possible, and Jesse Lingard would absolutely boost the quality in the squad. So get, I'd, I'd get him through the door, no, no shadow of a doubt. The last little piece I want to bring you is I was driving around South East London yesterday, probably around about 9.30 in the morning, Thursday morning, and in in the, ra in the van I have TalkSport on the radio. Forgive me, I know there's going to be some people going, why do you listen to that? 
but it's because I'm into football, I like sport, and obviously I'm the co-runner of a West Ham fan YouTube channel, so I like to try and keep abreast of news going on in the world of football. So I had the, the radio on, Alan Brazil was doing his breakfast show, and he had Glenn Hoddle on as a guest. Now, Glenn Hoddle, I know he's a Tottenham icon, Tottenham legend, Tottenham hero, but as a football man, I think his credentials are absolutely impeccable. I, I think he was a fantastic footballer. Let's not let's not muck about. He was a really gifted, cultured, playmaking footballer before there were really playmakers in the game in some respects, in the English game anyway. And he obviously went to France, he tested himself, he was under the tutelage of Arsene Wenger, came back and went into a management career which eventually took him to the England job. As a, as a coach, everybody says that, that he's he was well ahead of his time when he was in um, coaching of teams in the Premier League and in the national team. So when Glenn Hoddle says something, I I, I take it as um, a great deal of weight behind what he says. And what he said shocked me. Um, I say shocked me. I don't know whether it shocked me, but it certainly surprised me that he thought what he, he thought and he articulated it on live national radio, worldwide radio. Um, and he turned around and said, Declan Rice is the best player in the Premier League. I, I, and I was like, did he just say that? And I asked some people whether I'd heard it correctly, and they confirmed that I did. And obviously it's latterly come out in a few publications that Glenn Hoddle said it. So I was like, yeah, I heard it completely correctly. He actually said that Declan Rice is the best player in the Premier League. He also went on to say that his belief is that in the next three years, Phil Foden will go on to be the best player in the world. Now, I think that that's a massive statement but on both um, both fronts, but I'll just concentrate on Declan Rice because obviously he's the West Ham player and this is a West Ham fan YouTube channel and I'm a West Ham fan. So I'll concentrate on the Declan Rice statement. Is he the best player in the Premier League? Well, it's kind of difficult for me to say because I think if I turn around and say it, people would turn around and say it's me with my West Ham glasses on, a West Ham bias, and all the rest of it. Um, I would say that if there was a Premier League team that was picked right now, if you were picking a Premier League 11 and you were wanting to pick a central midfielder, and to be honest, I don't think that I can just class Declan Rice as a defensive midfielder anymore. I think he's evolved his game. He's now, he's now a box-to-box -box midfielder. He is now... Um, he's an almost complete midfielder. He's still got, he still can add to his game. He can still get better. He's only 22 and he will get better. We haven't seen the peak of Declan Rice yet. But for a, a, a former player and a f coach of the stature in the game of Glenn Hoddle to turn around and state that Declan Rice is the best player in the Premier League, quotes unquote is a massive, massive statement. Absolutely huge statement. And Declan Rice, if you were picking a Premier League eleven right now, would get into that team. No doubt about it. Is he the best player in the Premier League? I'm not going to argue with Glenn Hoddle. Um, as I say, I'm going to turn around and say that he is becoming... He's becoming... Um, he has become one of the first names on Gareth Southgate's team sheet. He's absolutely integral to the way that England play. He's absolutely integral to the way his club team plays. And all you hear is, you know, will Declan Rice go to Manchester City? Will Declan Rice go to Manchester United? Will Declan Rice go to Chelsea? That tells you the quality of the player. That tells you that we have a player on our hands that really is quite special. And for Glenn Hoddle to turn around and say, on a radio station that is now broadcast around the world and actually state that Declan Rice 
as far as he's concerned, is the best player in the Premier League. It's an absolutely huge statement. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Don't forget to drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and please do consider sharing this stream and various others on the channel onto your social media platforms. Thanks very much for watching. Stay safe. Come on, you irons.